I have had so many questions about retiring in Cambodia and in Southeast Asia, hence here is another video. So you want to retire, you want to go to Southeast Asia, Cambodia seems the lifestyle that you want, for example, do you rent or buy? Well, it's what you can afford, what you feel comfortable with. But I would, at least for the first maybe five or six years of your retirement, just rent. You can rent here for 350 American dollars for just the property. You may get two bedroom, you may get one bedroom. It depends on location. You may get a swimming pool. It's not a massive condominium. They're usually privately owned, not government owned or uh, owned by a big corporation, uh, a generator. But your costs on top of that. So... The costs on top of that, first of all, you would have to usually do a deposit of 350, then your first month, so you have to shell out like 700. What you would usually get is a internet connection. Sometimes it can be up to 20 or 30 Mbps, which is just enough to work or to use Netflix, for example, but you can buy your own if you choose to. You have an agreement with the landlord and the internet company and you want 100 Mbps up and down, then you're looking at around about $700 per year. But that's a public IP which is secure and it's pretty stable. There are companies in Cambodia for, for that. The electricity, if you run your air conditioning near enough 24 seven, then you would pay 25 cents per unit. Now, if you buy a house, it goes down to 20 cents per unit. So I would run my air conditioning. There would be one air conditioning on most of the day, but obviously not when I go out. And my electric bill varies from, I think the cheapest has been like $85 to just over $100. But if you rent at 25 cents a unit, that is going to be more. If you buy, you have to do your, have to pay for the garbage collection. That's not very expensive. And if you live in a community, like a private village, for example, then you have to pay for the additional costs of security, etc., etc. But all of that is free. If you rent, it will be included in the. The actual cost of living, not flying to different destinations, just the cost of living, I would say for one person, if you rent, you can do it for, you could say a thousand, but 2000 is a really comfortable mark. It means you can go out, you don't have to worry. So if you have a retirement basically, and you get $2,000 plus per month, then and that's for life then you have a good choice there but if you have something like me where you don't have a retirement or don't have a pension fund and you have assets and you have sort of like investments that you've done in the past then it, it can vary slightly but not a bit big difference with that so for food i will just give you an example my average food just for myself um i do live with my girlfriend but just for myself i would say is around about 80 dollars per month that's food and drink i'm a person who doesn't go out very often maybe once or twice a week i don't go to bars and don't go drinking it's just not my cup of tea anymore but occasionally i would but beer here is incredibly cheap cocktails are cheap wine is relatively expensive for a good bottle of wine I'm not a wine drinker. So if you did that maybe like twice a week going out, well, maybe 20 or $30. Now, if you didn't want to cook at home and didn't buy, you can go to these marvelous little restaurants and you can spend maybe $2.50 per meal and a glass of water on top of that is $3, $3.50 for the tip. You can do it for $10, but being more comfortable you would say fifteen dollars per day so multiply that by 30 and then you've got your food sorted all the additional again going out may be there but it's not expensive unless you want to have a really nice meal there are some five-star hotels here like hyatt for example and marriott courtyard where food would be you could say the same as hong kong prices or even maybe london prices i'm not too sure on that so whether to buy 
Well, if you rent, you have that freedom of choice and you can stay there for a really long time and possibly for your lifetime. But if you do find something that you go, wow, and you can, and this is the thing, you can afford it. You know you have that money coming in because you're investing into the country. You don't get anything out of it, but you do get a house and it's your own. And you possibly can get some kind of mortgage related to it as well but obviously it's best to pay the cash up front therefore if you are selling your house in america or sweden or whatever then that's a option but i would say don't rush into buying a house and there are so many reasons why most of the time in southeast asian countries you can actually own a first from a second floor condominium not the ground floor but the first or second floor you can upwards that can be yours there are some exceptions to the rule that you go to some of the real estate agents and say this is your actual house this is foreign owned if you do want to have a business you can't have a retirement visa for example but you can own it 100%. You don't have to have a Cambodian uh, partner like in Thailand. I think you do need that. You can get a property to buy a property actually really cheap. I think the cheapest I've seen is like $35,000, but the quality isn't going to be very good. It could be stuck in the middle of the countryside. The security is not going to be there. And there's going to be a lot of problems there. So be aware, I would say like 50,000 to get a two bedroom townhouse, near enough like what I'm living in now, but you have the additional cost. You have to pay for everything. There's nothing that's incorporated like it would be if you rent the house. We've covered food, we've covered electricity, water. Water varies. In this place, it's in it's incorporated with the security fee so the every six months we would pay the housing company who owns this area of land something like 72 dollars every six months if you're renting it could be five dollars ten dollars fifteen dollars it's not a big deal of money for the water we covered the food we covered the drinking is there anything else we covered the entertainment the entertainment in the adult nature, you could say, like Pattaya in Thailand, does exist, but it's not blatantly in your face, which makes like Cambodia a really relaxed place, especially Siem Rip. In the capital, Phnom Penh, it is a small scale of Pattaya. Cambodia, how to say, is like Thailand maybe like 20 years ago. It is developing, it is developing fast, it is a poor country, but they do welcome visitors and the visas are really easy. They're not difficult to get some of the easiest visas, visa restrictions possibly in the world with that one. So what are you thinking about? Is it going to be worth? Are you tired of uh, like really expensive living? Then I would say places like Vietnam here, um, and Thailand would be your cup of tea. It depends what you want. What I do first of all before all of this is maybe actually stay in Thailand for maybe two months. You can do that quite easily on a tourist visa. Come here for two months. Again, not difficult to do on tourists. Vietnam, I think you can do exactly the same. Travel around, around find the place you really like, spend a week or two there, and then sort of take a break, have a cooling down period, because it's all exciting. Work out the costs, and if it's practical, then pack your bags and welcome to Southeast Asia, welcome to the Kingdom of Wonder, welcome to Siem Rip, welcome to Cambodia. I think that's it which I covered. There are some small things as well. The internet charge for your mobile phone, here you can get it for $5 per month. There's no 5G here at the moment, but 4G is all around and you get eight gigabytes of data. You can do it on a pay and go. You can get seamless um, mobile phone cards. You don't need to have the actual SIM card. And there's three big companies here. There's um, cell card, there's smartphone and metphone, I think are the three big ones here. And it's about $5 per month. It depends what you use your phone for. If you're just on the internet 
And if you call people using uh, like WeChat or Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp, then that's going to cover it. If you're going to watch lots of movies on your phone, well, you can top up $1, $2. It's all in English and really pretty easy to understand. I don't think there's anything else really to say. Most of the apartments do come with furniture. If you are planning to stay for a long time, there are plenty of furniture shops. If you want the big screen TV, there's lots of electrical shops. If you want the Apple products, there are kind of like shops like more high end there. If you do want any kind of entertainment, it is available for you, but relatively it is quite cheap. If you do smoke, you'll be in smoker's paradise because uh, 200 sticks can cost you only like $8 compared to sort of like $80 in the United States, for example. The list is endless and it, it can be a perfect retirement for you. But if you don't feel, if you feel uncomfortable with a different lifestyle, then again, if you rent, you don't like it, then you can pack up your bags and go to the United Kingdom, for example. That's it. My name is James. Thank you for your time. This is Buzz, 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 Buzz. Bye-bye.